What's up folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Madonna, and we're going back to the 1983 self-titled debut album, and we're up to the song Think of Me, which I'm laughing because it immediately makes me think of Andrew Lloyd Webber's production of Phantom of the Opera and the song uh, Think of Me, which, you know, I enjoy that, uh, that soundtrack and I enjoy that song in particular. Nevertheless, um, I imagine there is no relationship there whatsoever. Um, so yeah, it makes me think as a general phrase, um, about wanting someone wanting another person to have them in their thoughts, someone who wants to be on the mind of another person. And, you know, given sort of the overall flavor of this first album, never mind some other songs that I know are coming down the, the road uh, in the future, it does make me think that this is in reference to like a romantic interest, a romantic connection, an intimate partner perhaps, and so that even when one is not physically in the presence of another, they will be in the thoughts and on the mind and in the emotions of the other person um, and in the passions of the other person, perhaps. So, yeah, that's what it makes me think of is a, a desire to have another person, you know, caring about you, knowing um, or wanting to know what you're up to, where you are, and when the next time they'll be able to see you. So, uh, yeah, let's get it. This is Madonna. The tune is Think of Me, and it's from the 1983 self-titled album. Like an alarm ping beacon. Uh, where's my synth bass line? You can feel it about to roll in. Come on. Madonna, you got it. But even within that. Sort of like a, hey, we're at a breaking point. You'll be sad when I'm gone. And if you want that to not happen, pay attention. A bit of that, like, kind of soulful delivery. That line, you're driving me crazy, it gets at what I was going to say, like, even if you're saying you're about to lose me and you're going to be sad when I'm gone, well, you're only saying that because you still care a lot and you want to, like, stop it from going off the rails.
kind of breakdancing vibes, but also with that guitar, it's a bit, still got that funk. I didn't know he was coming back. Like there's anger, passion, and sort of like frustration all in that tune, um, all in the different lines. So yeah, uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the sort of implied story of it. It's it's more like um, about normative prescriptions and sort of like warnings and whatever. So you're, she's not saying like I met this guy and now we're in this sort of situation where he keeps standing me up. It's like she's not telling you the story in like a traditional sense, but the way that she's talking about her feelings and the other person's attitude tells you everything. So I enjoy that um, songwriting as well. Again, it's another one that I'm enjoying the length. They all kind of feel like extended versions. And again, I, someone commented early on that like, you know, maybe younger generations feel like that's a little weird, like you want to be tidier with your tunes. I don't know if I apply to younger generations. I'm 42, so I feel like, you know, once you pass 40, surely you're not, you can't use the word young or younger anymore. Nevertheless, um, yeah, I don't mind it at all. I enjoy the sort of like expansive, um, duration of some of the tunes relative to a lot of similar tracks, not, you know, in all the, like, different elements, but, you know, synth pop, sort of catchy synth rock type of tunes from the mid-80s. Um, there's a lot of them that are, like, three and a half minutes, maybe four minutes, and a lot of these feel like they're five, six minutes, so um, really enjoying that. But, yeah, let me know what you think of this one. I will see you next time. Peace.